reboot um pc conference sega's bringing shining resonance both to pc and console the same day oh no it's not it's pc genmu's coming later on let's take a look at what cross fingers that does good or that they did good on it. a new dreamcast yep that, that's what we're getting Um, I think place it Valkyria Chronicles! Great game. I need to hit up the stream with that one. So are they just updating these old games? Yeah, Shenmu. We're getting a new version um Shenmu. That's gonna be intriguing. Okay. And yeah, there's a couple anime things I do not know about. I know I'm a big... Yo, Yakuza! I'm a big weeb. But I'm not the biggest. I don't... Oh, it's intriguing. There wasn't a ton of story in Warframe. It seems like they're adding to those elements. There's a lot of value there for a lot of people. And they enjoy the grind. It's a free game, so you can go and try it out. Valkyra Cron... There's a new Valkyria Chronicles? Wait. So, Valkyria Chronicles is actually really cool series. Valkyria Chronicles 4. I haven't been super into Valkyria Chronicles since the first one, but hey, we're going in. With some more Yakuza stuff as well. But it looks like they're taking a bunch of games and they're bringing them back out. And there's Yakuza 0. Best of Japan on the PC. So that's what we're getting from Sega to put on the PC. So I'm looking forward to Yakuza. I was talking about this earlier with somebody. Hey JV, would you like to buy all the Yakuza's? Yeah. We check that out. Yakuza's sick. It's one of your favorite games. But you played all the Yakuza games? You have. I haven't. I'm more of a PC guy. But also, Wood, how are you doing today? Coming up on the PC gaming show. What do we got? Publisher reveals <gasps> new games. And okay. the first ever gameplay footage of Overkill's The Walking Dead. Uh I I kinda don't care about The Walking Dead. Buy all the Yakuza games it's worth. We shall see. <laughs> Our next guest is a regular here at the PC gaming show. Oh, day nine. Yakuza is just amazing. Okay, I got you. We'll see how it is when they come out. See how my catalog is going. Hmm. True enough. So, I got into the first Killing Floor. I never really got into Killing Floor 2. You get together, shoot zombies, buy bigger guns to shoot more zombies, and then hopefully you'll be able to beat the boss. Okay. I like the fact that they're adding value to the game. Just got home from work and got me on the big screen? Cool, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And also, thanks for the bets. So now they're going to be able to upgrade their weapons. Okay. That's actually pretty dope. Because depending on maybe the map, a certain mod on a gun might be a little bit better than mods on some other guns. So that's kind of interesting. You might be able to get some group play and just go, hey, we can probably funnel them all through these two points. Just spread, scatter shot on everything. We got some from Tripwire. Oh. So they're going sci fi too. Yo! Yeah. 
Yeah, we got those carnival zombies. Oh, that monkey! Okay. And take him out. Everything's just going against this guy. Interesting. What? Okay, that looks really good. Yeah, that'll just take things apart. Okay. Man. Optician says my eyes are okay. I say, then how do you explain my husband? <laughs> As is tradition, okay. content that you just saw will be available. Uh, I'll be happy with that. That was pretty fun. So, I think how Killing Four wound up becoming what it is was it was a mod. Then they worked on it. They made Kill Flo Killing Floor, and then they actually were able to make Killing Floor too. Looks like they're improving quite a bit. That's right. So, Sean, it's really challenging for developers right now with the thousands of games that are coming out every year. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get talk to Steam about that. And then you have the traditional publishing deal. It is difficult. So we're giving developers fair deals. We're going to be helping them rise hmm. the noise so they can get noticed. And because of our experience developing our own games and publishing our own yeah. games, we're going to help them with marketing, funding, mentoring, feedback to help them succeed. Yeah, I mean, the game that we have on... I like the idea. That's Road Redemption. The spiritual successor of Road Rash. We're going to be helping them grow and succeed even more on Steam, but also bring the franchise beyond Steam. Okay. So Tripwire is going to help them get further. Maybe get on PS4, Xbox. Heck, you might even be able to put that on Wii. If you're familiar with the Killing Floor universe, you know Alex Quick was the modder that created the original Killing Floor mod, which Tripwire yep, put there you go. Green commercial, and then Alex went off, assembled his own team, made the yeah. game Depth, which was sharks and humans fighting each other, very, very successful. And now it's come full circle. Where we're hey, what's up, Noble? How you doing? And we're gonna bring his all new game to market. Uh, okay, and what's all this all new game? World exclusive. I wasn't big on Depth, but I did play the first Killing Floor, and I was really big in on that. So I'm excited to see what this guy can put forth. My son told me they announced Elder Scrolls 6. Did they give any good? No. They gave nothing. It was just, hey, we're doing it. So probably 2019 we'll get it. And there's going to be a phone adaptation of the Elder Scrolls. Which will also make it to PC. It's going to be an interesting, like, build your town, do battles, level up your character. Oh, Lord. Ah. Oh. He really enjoyed depth. And that's where he got the sharks. So those sharks are coming in again. Wait, are we playing as a shark? We're playing as the... <laughs> We're playing as the shark from Jaws. What? Yo, let's go. So, Devil May Cry 5 looks nasty. Yeah, that's, you know, what Capcom had everybody working on. Just saying. It's an action RPG? What? Oh, you're kidding me. So do you like upgrade and improve the shark? Is there like skill trees? You do. There is a shark skill tree. Full single player campaign, you eat your way through it. You got big <laughs> teeth, you can jump out of the water and snatch people off piers, and all that fun stuff. I, I didn't realize this was a power fantasy I needed so badly. 
You can hold your breath while out of order for an extra 30 seconds. You want to play as that shark? Yeah, man, that's actually pretty cool. No. No. Release that for like 20 bucks. A lot of people are going to pick that up. Yo. I'm also digging Day 9's tie. I feel like I could rock something like that. You'd pay 40? I don't know if I go 40. And, and we're just gonna gloss over that let's keep going hi we're an untitled publisher yes really that's our name you're an untitled publisher okay the games and developers aren't so we're untitled so they're curating games for us okay because steam hasn't been doing a good job of that lately we're announcing three games cool and releasing one art right away that's the benefit of being pc just drop it when you feel like it i also like i i, I like how they set that up it's aesthetically pleasing but it's very minimalistic yeah yeah i took one art class i'm gonna shut up now what the heck is this what is this is this an rpg they're gonna do battle this is legit an rpg oh bravery network online I can't say I'm upset about that. Now, my question is, are there pre-made teams or do you scour um, the game to find certain characters and put them together? Because that seems kind of cool. Especially if you get some online matches going with certain people and try to climb their ladder. You like it? I'm digging it. What, what are you guys feeling about that? Because I could kind of dig it. I could lose myself in that for... What? The heck? So, oh, we're getting meta. So he's outside of the game now. So is he going to get a chance to go back in it? Oh no, there's a turnip. Harvest, yes, no. Okay. Another really minimalistic, I, I like that. So that didn't tell us much, but it looks intriguing. Oh, and we got some pixel art game. Warning, there's a boss coming your way. Oh, no, just normal monsters. Okay, this seems like a fun jaunt. Is this Metroidvania style? I think so. I could dig it though. And that was a monster. So it looks like there's a chance the hive is evolving. What? So as you kill opponents, the hive can get stronger? Or your opponents can get stronger? Whoa! Okay, overwhelm. So I'm guessing the, the hive is going to attempt to overwhelm me. Maybe you have to last a certain amount of rounds? Hmm. I don't know if that's the best idea, Pharaoh. Thank you, money. It's getting to a point where people gotta work to get my money. A virtual resort? Was some truly spectacular wildlife. A virtual resort? Oh. 
A lot. <laughs> that was... She said that with conviction. You think that things are gonna turn out differently, huh? Yo! Okay. Yeah, well, hey. We're getting Jurassic World soon. Remember, Here's the thing. life always finds a way. Humanity is desperate for it. We are seduced by it. Deceived by the illusion of it. Looks better than Fortnite and Battle for, uh, Battlefield 4. Because if there's anything that chaos Actually, BOF? Hmm. Us, it's that nature is on its own course. And when we interfere, mm -hmm. humanity tries to put nature into orderly boxes. This is going to be such a streamed game. I'm telling you guys that right now. And what makes us such unique creatures? Is Everyone is going to love destroying their own park. And still believing that we can win. Wow. I feel like even though you know they're herbivores, that's not really that safe. Oh, he got out. Jurassic World Evolution. Now, I assume that this was going to be one of those, you, you know, like movie ripoff games. Not movie ripoff games, but you know, made just for a movie. That's actually looking pretty dope. I like that. And they're going to try to take their expertise and answer the question How do you make an open world game in VR? Let's take a look. Oh, no. I'm not, nah. I'm, I'm not about that life. Virtual reality open world. I'm walking into something. I'm tripping into something. I'm just falling down the steps. Although I've never really tried VR. Um, anyone in chat tried it? I'm giving new life to the world below. Hmm. Whoa. So we're playing as this little robot. Oh, that's not good. Now it's going to be this robot against, I guess, the rest of them? Or is... Huh. Alright, he's back up. But the first task might actually be trying to repair ourselves. Nice. That actually seems really cool. You're looking down in a puddle and you actually see how your robot looks at that point in time. Okay, got an eye. But we also have to remember that there are enemies present. And he's upgrading himself. I'm assuming these are terraforming robots. And maybe the other robots have a command to get rid of the terraforming robots? I don't know why, but yeah. They're roughly the same make and model. Oh, he's going in. Nice little EMP. And we got shields? What? Well, that would make sense, though. So if there are robots that are specifically... And we can help others? Can we build up our own, like, base? Yo. Looks like it. Okay, that's scary. Like, if that pops out, you know, the sea in front of me, I'm immediately taking that set off for a minute. That is intriguing. I, I can't... Like, I do my best to be cynical, but no. That seems really intriguing. Because there's definitely a story behind it, or a deeper story, you could say. Okay. 
Hitman Two looks sick. I did not see that. I didn't see that. I did not see anything of Sodi's. I was not able to make it. Well, in Stormland, you play as an android gardener, and uh, an entity called okay. the Tempest uproots your habitat and shatters your android body. So you've got to travel to a civilization above the Thunderheads to repair yourself and save your friends. And I want to ask what open world means. In so we're an android, not a robot. Plus it's about giving the player which will explain why we're so human world, acting. With a set of android movement abilities that are designed. Or wait, no. Agency. Yeah, because that's always a huge. No, an android is okay. Yeah, android's a robot. Yeah, well, um, in Stormland, you can do things like fly just above the slipstream with your outstretched android huh. hands. Yeah. Um, you can shoot a laser into the cloud surface and then make a ramp, kick off of that. Okay. Uh, climb up a cliffside, like literally. There's gonna be some fun parkour elements to this. Android straight, and then like push off and glide back down using your hands. To control your descent just it's, massive freedom of movement yeah th th that's and we do have weapons that are designed together to work fluidly so that uh, movement feels exhilarating the question is what is up with these villains i'm curious why these why are they doing this there, there are a series of things that we're doing is it just to gain control of this city i mean i mean this planet about the, the expressiveness of having trackpad in hands and how we use that for combat how okay. we use it for movement um, even things like scavenging technology to attach it to your body. Like, you look down, you get a new piece of tech, and you, you attach it right into your <laughs> arm. And then, you know, suddenly you've got the ability to harness electricity yeah. or cloak yourself or all kinds of different cool Android abilities. That is a really good usage of VR. You can talk to me a little bit about the world and what it means for it to be... Because it's you feeling yeah, it. That's a really good question. I talk about Vampire the Masquerade where I type certain things but just the immersion of moving something or taking your arm out and then replacing that arm seems really immersive and you never know what you're going to discover so every single thing cool. you find has the potential to ha hide an enemy stronghold or a network okay. of underground caverns or brand new tech discovery that's awesome somebody yeah, dropped their phone where can we go for more information well um you can uh, stay tuned uh, by watching um, the uh, the Facebook and Twitter with um, at Stormland VR, or you can check us out at insomniac.games. Oh, cool. Interesting. I'm, I'm wondering how that will do. Frankie's up in the balcony with our next absolutely gorgeous looking indie title. It really is, Kion, because next up we've got a first look at a new game from publisher Raw Fury, a neo noir detective drama featuring a Paris cabbie who finds himself drawn into a world of crime. That's hmm. bleu. Yes, I speak French. I can't wait for this one, so let's take a ride with the trailer. Okay, that actually sounds interesting. Like, I'm all for nowhere dramas. Or just nowhere crime stories, but... Hmm, I don't know. So my man's a cabbie who saw too much one night? Yo. Okay, I'm digging the artwork. Or the art style. Because <sighs> it looks so much different from the majority of games that I see. That reminds me more of an animated series, to be honest with you. Okay. That guy's murdered. The police wouldn't listen to me, but I saw something right before the killer attacked me. What you see? I saw a silver ring. So from the people who wind up in our cab, we could get a bunch of different information and we could know where to go to see if we could find certain people who might know something or be tied to the crime. I'm assuming the person who was dead at the beginning probably has some connection to our cab driver in order for him to actually look into this. Okay. If you like that last game, you'll definitely that seems like it's gonna be a little bit of fun. Same publisher, Raw Fury, and you might be able to replay the game a couple times, with an incredible art just hunting after Let's different clues. At Sable? Sable? Huh. Whoa. Talk about interesting art styles. Yo! Come 
We've got land speeders? Okay. So we'll be doing a lot of scavenging? Yeah, there's definitely some exploring to be had. Whoa. So there it looks like dungeons? Now the question is, is it just exploring or will there be combat elements as well? Uh, they didn't tell us. But that's looking pretty beautiful. What'd you guys think? Joining me to talk about Sable, it's so intriguing. It was two guys? And Greg Kithriotis. And I've heard Daniel Feinberg's name before as well. So what can we expect? Uh, Sable is an open world desert exploration game. It's okay. not a game about combat or about leveling up. Mm. It's solitude and it's a game about exploration. Uh, you play as Sable, a girl leaving her home uh, to explore this world filled with monumental architecture, fallen okay. ships, and you'll travel around on your hover bike learning about the people, the culture, and the history of this uh, world. And, you know, I, I, I've talked about it before. I think this art style is amazing. Hmm. Where's the origin? It looks trash. So we were really I think it looks beautiful. But... It's definitely not going to be for everyone because there's going to be no combat. This is also pre-alpha. And yeah, Studio Ghibli. That's that's the sense of wonder I am getting from this particular game. That Studio Ghibli style. Oh, we got magic? Huh. most of the core development the, the art and the programming what about the music that was in that trailer yeah so that was a new track by japanese breakfast so oh yeah the t-shirt oh the yeah right so she uh michelle she, that's the band she is doing the soundtrack for the game um japanese breakfast is one of my favorite bands right now uh it's incredible to have well, I mean, it, it all just came together so beautifully okay in the trailer and i know i gotta look them up now regular about updating you know blogs sharing what's going on with the development where can people go to find more uh, so they can go to our twitter account shedwork Greg and shedwork stan or to sablegame.com lovely gentlemen okay. thanks so much for joining me once again the name of the game is sable our next title is it's one definitely one not going to be for everybody even showing up in our very definitely not gaming show it's cloud but it's intriguing game still hard at work on their title star citizen let's oh dude it. star citizen the one guy's clapping in the back because he's been waiting for star citizen to actually come out for ages oh well, let's see how far they've gotten Because I'm just not hype at all. It's just, hey, Star Citizen. Have you finished it yet? Nope. I mean, this tech looks amazing. This looks beautiful. I mean, good lord. Look at this. But it, it's been a while. It's been a while. So flying through space, being a space bounty hunter or space pirate sounds incredible. Getting into space battles, robbing people, protecting your cargo from space pirates. Amazing. I mean, look at this. I mean, think about just setting up your own ship. Hey, where are we going to have guns? Are we going to put guns here? What are we going to do with it? But I don't know. Looks beautiful. But we'll see. We shall see. The universe is waiting.
Prepare for the Alpha 3.2. Okay. So they're on Alpha 3.2. Not a huge fan of Walking Dead. Okay. So you were talking about Hitman before. Let's check that. Out. We'll we'll check that out pretty soon. Ah, uh, we're talking about the hardware. Okay. Okay. Yo, 4K is big now. But really, wow. What really takes it over to okay. this level is the inclusion of G-Sync HDR. Yeah, now I've, I hear a lot about HDR. Can you explain a little more in detail what that is and what that means? Mm. Well, there's a, quite a bit that goes into it, but uh, for the purpose of this conversation, the fact that there are 384 individual backlit zones, so the backlighting can be individually controlled, really bright, very dark. It makes a, a better contrast on screen. Okay. Individually controlled. The brightness of the screen is far above a typical display. Typical, you're looking at 300 to 400 nits. We're looking at 600 with the Predator X27 with a max of 1,000 nits. And you know, some of mm. the titles that were showcased uh, just uh, now, there's a wide variety of... I'm not going to say that you should explain to people who don't know what a nit is what a nit is, but... big range we see in gaming. Well, one of the big things that helps is the color gamut that's available Whoa. in these displays. We're able to do 99% yeah. of the Adobe color gamut, so it's better representing the vision of the art director. Yeah, and some of the games that you see on okay. the screen that support HDR, Mass Effect Andromeda, Far Cry 4, Nino Kuni 2. Uh, again, you won't see them in HDR. Now, there is a beautiful comparison. That way we can't just stream it to you, but... I can dig that. One of my next questions about... PC gamers tend to have a huge... Because that shows so much. Sort of products to look for at those price ranges. Just well, being able to explain from, uh, or show to the, point to the standard and, and what we have. ...products or multi-view surround multi-display products but we also go really crazy sometimes we decide we put our engineers to the test that's pc gaming limit. so one of the projects we've worked on is something called the predator 21x this is a okay. 21 inch curved screen uh laptop with a mechanical keyboard what graphics curved. cards yeah. science we, uh, material we did a <laughs> curved <laughs> laptop to, to be serious not just to joke we actually have to ship this with a pelican case to protect the laptop and it sells yeah. for nine thousand dollars and we sold uh, we could make so oh of course you sold it because someone will want it this predator laptop you brought up but yikes man segment where can people go to hear more about or even pick one up once they stop being sold out so the, that's the good news is that we're shipping now our customers partners are selling them the bad news is a few have already sold out of this new predator x27 monitor I believe Micro Center is still in stock. Amazon will be in stock again soon. Well, thank okay. you so much for joining yeah. me on stage, Eric. Frankie is awaiting in the balcony with our very next title. Good. But that's intriguing. A curved laptop? What? A space vessel, farm resources, deal with terrifying alien infestations, and explore a vast randomly generated universe. Oh, and you can take DNA from the aliens you encounter across the galaxy, splice them with members of your crew to create... Wait, what? Just a typical day at the office. Let's take a look. Okay, that actually sounds pretty intriguing. Okay. The mission is to find a new home for the crew on board of this ship. Okay, do we start with everyone being the same race, or...? Whoa. Okay, I don't. I I don't know if that's the best idea. I feel like we're playing God here now. But okay, we could go to battle with some of these monsters. So does that mean we could just like splice a mandible with somebody? But then again, we could also make someone like resistant to fire or good in low oxygenate areas, and that's terrible. Because now you've got the monsters out and they're just breeding everywhere. And now they're... What the heck? Yeah. 
capturing dangerous aliens from all across the universe and then breeding them might not be super safe Tasty treats is nice. On my behalf, I'll take one now. Thank you very much. Well done. So, if you have ever dreamt of spending the duck is epic in one of Earth's best gaming festivals, visit your duck for Street Fighter 5. I want whoever has been working on Devil May Cry 5 to come to Street Fighter 5. All right, Webster, all this just put some work in. How about we look at a trailer for the next edition of Play Entertainment's beloved survival series, Don't Starve? Don't starve. So now it's a Hamlet? Hey, Don't Starve has been cranking out some good stuff. Oh, the eye! Uh, go for the eyes? Okay. So now he can explore tombs? Oh. Oh. That's. That's actually pretty dope. Whoa, they're big people! Okay, are we going to get attacked by pig people or... Oh, he's about to get robbed by pig people. Dang! Hit him up for all his gold. So that's intriguing. Because we've added other... I'm not going to say sentient beings, but... People that we could talk to and don't starve. And get some stuff working. It probably make it look visually epic, but I want a better net code and some balance. Yeah, that'd work. But Don't Starve Hamlet actually looks like a little bit of fun, especially the exploration. In a that never fails to make um, did you know that Capcom fired eight percent of the Street Fighter developers from the early two thousands? I believe it. Yeah, that, that's kind of what happens when you fire the majority of your staff. And then they go to other companies and they wind up either making godlike games or just being pretty good at what they do. Explains a lot. And they got to the point where nobody knew what to do. Oh, and we've got a tech demo for Just Cause 4. Now the question is, is all of this stuff Oh wait, no, this isn't Just Cause. What is this? Although it seems like interactive... Like, everyone's talking about their seasons and, and the rain effects and a bunch of other stuff recently. Yeah, it's Just Cause. Just Cause is one of the biggest tech demos. I feel. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful looking deer. Plot twist, some of these employees are working for Arc System. I believe it. They made Guilty Gear Blaze Blue and DBZ, yeah. In fact, one of the guys from Arc System designed Fong. That's kind of how it goes. A long time ago, somebody from Capcom fired the person who wound up founding SNK. This is how it goes. But it's creating a deficit now. Everybody likes talking about the tornado. Mm -hmm. to Apex, it's also a big boy that actually works, it's fully physicalized, yeah. this means that it's roaming the world, wreaking havoc, and... Uh, it's not, it's not just like a background piece, it's no, actually impacting no, no. the world This is you. just cause... Interesting. You play with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, this tornado is just running around, does it have a pre-set, like, area to effects? Or, how does that work out? SNK made some epic games, yes they did. 
that extends to hey jb i missed all the pc conference so far is anything noteworthy been shown not a lot of crazy stuff there is going to be an interesting something that's definitely going to get streamed a lot if it's decent is a build your own like roller test roller coaster tycoon a build your own jurassic world theme park that i think a lot of people are going to become attached to that we got some pc tech demo stuff there's a curved there's a laptop with a curved screen go figure sam and outside of that not much just normal stuff if you're a fan don't starve there's a new don't starve coming out the uh the guys who made star citizen no not star citizen star citizen there's, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming through if you're a big fan of space. There's actually something where you capture alien creatures and then splice DNA into their into your crew, which is kind of nuts. But we'll see how it works out. Yes, a game where you get to play... Oh, I forgot about that. There's a game where you get to play as a shark and it is an RPG. It is Jaws the RPG. That is what it is, and Farrah will spend 40 bucks for it, just because he wants that feeling. He's gonna play, <laughs> he's gonna play the Jaws music in the background, dun dun dun, dun and just enjoy his day. Now we got The Walking Dead. But yeah, that's what's going down, Sam. How you doing? So, do we have some, do we have any, like, um, little Walking Dead fans out here? Make me have a small bite? Yeah, you could do that. There, there's different, um, skill trees that you could have for raising the body level, how high you jump out of the water, I'm assuming how long you can be out of the water, and a bunch of other stuff. That's good. Mm. Doctors and teachers, writers and architects. But when Can't say you're a fan these days? I can believe it. I feel like they've kind of... I, I want to say they've run it... I was never a fan, but I feel like they might have just run it into the ground a little bit. Some things shouldn't go... How, how many seasons is The Walking Dead, actually? Mm-hmm. Fight. And I'm also, like, super over zombies. It's cool, but there's a lot of games working with zombies. Dying Light actually looks very interesting because it's not so focused on the zombies. It's more focused on a lot of dubious choices that you can make. You, you stop somewhere around three or four. Mmm. It's been lame since uh, one. Mmm. It's a bold statement, Pharaoh. But yeah, I, I think it's been going on for a few too many seasons. And I have more First Dying Light, yeah, they're, they came up with a really interesting concept for Dying Light. Because society has gotten to the point where we're having like a second medieval age. And depending on your choices during the day, you can help certain factions rise. They were talking about some guys who got um, control over a very, very large amount of clean drinking water. And you could either accept a job by the people who want to keep peace and order to take care of those guys so that they can now control that water and bring it to the masses. Or you could be a jerk. If you do go ahead and get them that water, the people are better. People are feeling good. You could actually go throughout the city if you've been injured. Drink some water, heal up, but you've given power to that faction and they, they're not good. If you do not comply with them, there will be dire consequences. So it's intriguing. They, they've taken their game and moved in a different direction and I like seeing people do that with a larger IP. Traditionally, like combat and action. Um, oh, snap. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, she can do it. And, and button mashes and all that. 
this year um with the final season we're, we're um, yo get the leg uh, segments of there you go combat. yeah you see you see some of this right there you go so kind agreed of yeah on me there. <laughs> <laughs> of course she is and you... oh yeah so we also have like the um the orbital cam like the get this boring game, game. Um, so yo a lot of people love it man um, to explore a lot of people me i'm just like yeah i'm more interested in like the star well not star citizen but just a lot of that stuff i like exploring i like building oh and uh killing floor 2 is doing some more stuff sam Okay, so it starts, um, we uh, Starfield Star Citizen. For a long time. We are post -time I do believe that's the name. Comics. They are um, 3.2 for their alpha now. Speed Fighter, what's good, Speed Fighter? How you doing? Are you a fan of The Walking Dead? And if so, when did... Season, what season did it kind of go down? Oh, you really were talking about that <laughs> trash? <laughs> Yo, they'll finish Star Citizen eventually. Not, not to be rude. I, I know y'all are, are working on it, but where they're working on it, and a lot of people are hopeful, but I'm just kind of like, eh. I like the idea in this game that there's no parents, so it's up to the kids to defend themselves, and that's going to come up with some interesting stuff. Ooh. Always like seeing the voice acting booth, and I like the fact that they gave her a tablet. That game's never getting finished. Probably not. Delusional is the correct term. Doing Gusta? Nah, not really. I like watching others play it more. You've been grinding DBFC? Alright, I got you. Yo, they had a big tournament a little while ago. Last I hear, they were selling virtual plots of land for the- What? They were selling virtual plots of land? So, so you're going to come into the beginning of Star Citizen? Owning a huge tract of land and being like an asteroid baron? Nah. I, I want to ride. <laughs> when I start Star Citizen, I want no penny to my name. Rob people so I can actually afford a gun. Sign up with somebody. Grind. As, as some type of bounty hunter or pirate or whatever and then eventually have my own pirate crew that that's kind of what i'm thinking about for ridiculous sums of money yo you want to buy a curved laptop for nine grand people bought it and of course there's ridiculous tech in it and you get that beautiful that that beautiful image but not really huge on spending large amounts of money for stuff like that Is that a wand in your pocket? Now let's get back to business. We'll see. Also, what's the balance looking like in DBZ, DBFZ around now? Because I've seen some very interesting... Whoa! Oh, baby. That's looking good. That That's looking beautiful. Is this from the same guys who made that uh, Kingdom game? It seems like very similar art style. Ooh. Okay, that's that's a little much. Okay, and you can summon rain clouds? That is an interesting idea. So as your wizard or whatever you feel like playing as, you have destructible environments that you can do a lot of stuff with. Is that acid? Yeah, it looks like you're a wizard. Noita. Wishlist it now? I might, we'll see. Our next title is one that's very near and dear to my heart, as it is the spiritual successor to one of my favorite childhood games, Theme Hospital. 
Joining hmm? me to talk about it are the two founders of Two Point Studios to talk about Two Point Hospital. Join me in welcoming Dr. Now that I don't know about. Dr. Carr. Okay. Welcome, doctors. Didn't Bethesda get started by like two doctors? Great if I got the lore right. Two fully trained medical professionals. How does one run a hospital in Two Point Hospital? Stethoscope eliminating your microphone? Oh, you know what? Yep. Every year. Come here. Talk to me. Okay. How do we run a hospital? <laughs> so two point hospital is a game about That was a little embarrassing, but yeah. Uh, the stethoscope yeah. went down, or maybe there's some wiring in the mic that went down. Yeah. I look out here, you say. Yeah, no. So we're just setting up our own virtual hospital. Okay. A lot of interesting characters in our interesting so that lob is wrecked really interesting wait what for them. was that a person you have fun in two point county exploring different regions and curing people with different ailments and as you can see on the screen we've got certain... oh that doesn't look fun we actually uh, research this it's uh, mm -hmm. a certain anima and also you can train people uh you can uh, train your doctors to be better your nurses to be better do research so you can unlock new wonderful this guy that, that guy has a, you know, a hand stuck to his head how do you get a hand that was stuck on somebody's head off oh that person doesn't look good experience that you'll be playing through because this looks like it's quite deep into the running of a hospital yeah this is later on so uh you start off and you're and he has no head researching and you're, you're training up we, we might need to work on that first and, uh, or, no he has a tiny head I see this malady. Yeah, I see this malady called turtle head. Can you explain oh, yeah. a little bit about what that is? Yes, yes. It's, it's what? Wait, that's a turtle? It gets stuck in the neck orifice. Just pops out slightly. Oh, dude. Extracted. And uh, Mark, how, how yeah, well, this is uh, something you <laughs> maybe uh, we've all had. We've all been. Oh, uh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> you know, a little bit of suction always helps. And yeah. <laughs> and ten grand. That's actually a real But I could I can understand. That was that, that took some work on that. What is a monobrow infestation? Yeah. Well, monobrow is you know a monobrow infestation. We've all seen that. Yeah. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Wax every week, y'all. You might shed uh, a bit of hair and then back it, and it can screen. It will actually leave the body and it needs to be got rid of uh, before yeah. the health inspectors arrive. It looks like the monobrows are multiplying in the hospital. They, they breed very, yeah, they're big breeders. The monobrows. Yeah, they like monobrows. monobrows breed quickly. Oh my goodness! So you've got to keep your hospital clean and well maintained. Yeah. So the monobrows are actually coming off of people. And now you had to hire somebody to clean them up. hospital was very mission based. How does the experience of running a hospital change as goes on? That's kind of nuts. your first hospital, it's you know, it's a pretty simple affair and then you move on to Two Point County. There's different regions, there's a cold region, there's warm regions with infected So each region is going to have different issues. Okay. We can have a hospital and a volcano. So it might struggle to manage cool. the hospital empire because the yeah. volcano went off nearby. Yeah, it's about spinning plates, isn't it? You've got everything set up nicely and then something happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'd love to know more information mm -hmm. about when Two Point Hospital mm. is coming up. Well, we're coming up to fall and uh, you can check us out by going onto our Steam page and hopefully wish listing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, okay. we'll let you in the end. We'll post. I was gonna say, wish <laughs> another battle royale. Again, really looking forward to it coming out. Thank Let me tell you something. Doctor and Doctor. Realm Royale was made by High Res Studios. Yeah, you know, the same guys behind Smite, which is a MOBA that everybody thought would not do well, and then Paladins, which is a hero shooter, which a lot of people. Yeah, I streamed it. I played a little bit of it. 
It's actually legit. The thing about it is you have classes of characters and those classes can do different stuff. It is not, yeah, I like engineer. I played a bit of it. And a big thing with it, yep, that's a BS ability. But it actually may be the game that lowers PUBG a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not. And it's by high res studios these guys continuously go into a genre or an area that's just full like mmo you've got dota you've got league of legends you're never gonna make it but high res studios smite did it wasn't fantastic but it did good you know it still has a huge fan it still has a dedicated fan base today including paladins no one thought that paladins was going to do good when you could just spend money to play um overwatch but no it got its fan base so i'm getting the feeling that uh battle royale games are going to be the new zombie jet oh yeah think about it not only um not only did what you call it add a battle royale mode call of duty but battlefield also is going to have a battle royale mode it's that new thing to add that's that's pretty much it so yeah once you kill people you disenchant your loot and you can build up your armor or your class abilities like the engineer his shield has a certain amount of damage they could hit and there's a certain build up for it so if you wind up getting the legendary or higher tier upgrades you could do a little bit better in those battles and sometimes that that's what really will do it for you that's a good idea it's a little chicken with like a little jailbird like yeah i like what they're doing with mixer hey this guy's doing really good he's about to get jacked up and then they boost you or they host you and then everybody will be able to check that out that's a very interesting incentive for to not only stream the game but to stream on mixer as you may remember our next game is made by a core team of just two people they're really trying to cut into twitch's business What? This press trailer features a first look at their unique combat system, along with plenty of cute ooblets and environments. Let's take a gander. Oh. The heck is this? Are they gonna fight? Please tell me they're gonna fight. <laughs> they're going to dance battle? He took damage! He took damage! And of course it's double fun. Yeah, I've heard rumors of them paying streamers to switch to them pri primarily? I can believe it. We'll see how that goes. And we'll see how that goes. Because the thing about it is, if you were big enough, like let's say Ko or um, Lyric or Summit, you could legit just pick up shop and go somewhere else. And that will be 10,000 to what, like 15,000 people just heading over to another streaming platform. So the wars have started and it's going to be intriguing. So yeah, you got your little mushroom Pokemon. So we grow them and then, and then we could have them dance battle. That's, that's actually adorable. Not just that, but they've been hiring staff from Steam and other areas and bring them in. In the Anno games, let's take a look at Anno 1880. Anno 1880, okay. What do we got on this? That looks lovely. It's 
So we're actually looking at the streaming wars, which will go down eventually. And the thing is, you can be like high res, you don't have to be top. You just have to be good enough to make a profit and cut into somebody else's. You know what I mean? You have to do enough things right. Okay. Yeah, 1880 industrialization starting to go down. Competition never hurts? No, it doesn't. Because there's some stuff... Twitch is fantastic. They do amazing things. I, I'd like a, a couple things to change up, but we'll see what happens. For consumers? Oh, it's fantastic for consumers. It's great for consumers. Because you have... I don't want to bring up fighting games, but... Hey, we had uh, Feet come through said, I'm big into DBFZ. A while ago was Street Fighter Tech and MK. If you weren't feeling those, you know, you were a anime. But now Dragon Ball Fighters, Z Fighters, has really garnered this huge fan base. And now you could go over there, have a lot of games, talk, I'm assuming, you know, get some people together, have your lobbies, run through them, play characters you like, and research your own tech with characters that you enjoy, that you feel connected to. So, we'll see how it works out. Well, no, DBFZ is doing fantastic. They had a tournament recently, those summit tournaments. They had a summit tournament that was really crazy. Oh, it was beautiful for the FGC as a whole. Because now, they, they, it's like every couple of months, other fighting games just improve, and Street Fighter is kind of just, uh, I'm still rocking out with Street Fighter, maybe at some point I might get into DB, um, Dragon Ball Z Fighters, we'll see. Or more Tekken too, because Tekken I played for a while and I was really enjoying Tekken. It's just like learning Tekken's crazy for me. It also takes up a huge amount of space on my computer, but we'll see. There's going to be more fighting games coming out. I, I know MK is definitely working on something, so I'm intrigued. Because the one thing about it is the amount from esports that got put into the fighting game community is actually pretty cool. This is all just filler? A little bit. Oh, dude. I had a guy like teaching me Tekken. I was trying a combo for like 25 minutes. It was a juggle. Yes. This is for a very niche audience, and I apologize to anybody who's watching, I'm going to throw this up on YouTube. If you're watching and you're just like, stop talking about Street Fighter, I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. Also, once this is over at 9, there's going to be something crazy going down. Helping Final Fantasy Final Six Seven Remake get something there since Square dropped the ball earlier today. Heck yeah, they did. I doubt it though. So, I, I'm not looking forward to that Final Fantasy 7. One day, I own Final Fantasy 7. We gotta stream that. Because I've never actually really played it hard. But, I feel like Kingdom Hearts did everything right. Kingdom Hearts is gonna be a big thing. I'm, I might actually get up in on that. Just check out anno-union.com. No law. Your big community platform, and we want to to invite especially strategy games. Gonna be big. Yeah. There to yeah. Developing the game, sharing feedback. Just check it out. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining me on stage to talk about Anno 1800. Our next title is the final battle royale of the night. Boy, play five. <laughs> 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 it's a little bit. I played it. I've never really just like <laughs> made it further than what. Um, the second mission you do with Barrett? No, when you when you first get Aerith, 
I think. That, that's how far I've made it. Another battle royale! Let's go! No, it's the thing! And you know what's the best part about this? Every battle royale that is coming out, that's getting made, is making the PUBG lawsuit even worse. We, because they're suing um the makers of Fortnite. It's going down. And every single one, oh, it's explosives? Explode, you know what I'm talking about. Yo, the cyanide and happiness, guys. Let's go. Also, it's a cyanide and happiness game that's going to come out at some point. I'm interested. Well, Street Fighter has the precedent case. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's Judgment Day. Is it Aliens? Oh, he didn't get picked up. It's the Rapture. Uh, Street Fighter, um, Capcom, U Capcom America. Oh no. Ha! <laughs> there you go. No problem. Well, he's screwed. There you go. <laughs> the Rapture Rejects! Yo, is he holding a guy up? Was good but yeah basically here's the thing you could have very similar gameplay but as long as no one is detracting from your game as long as no one will go out and say i'm looking for street fighter and they pick up the copycat game if there's no reason to believe that someone shopping will pick that up because they think it's Street Fighter, then you're good. As long as they make it not only visually distinct from it and they don't copy any names or whatever, you're fine. That's what I believe, at least. We'll, you know, see how it's working out. Also, we got some Hitman. Let's see what's up. Yeah, he's done. With the scissors? Hmm. Now, how's he gonna take her out? Yeah, we really beat somebody with a fish? A frying? Dang! And he just made it look like an accident right there. Okay. I'm liking that. That, that was pretty dope. I'm gonna be real. They they did a good job on that. You want that game now? Now. November? You can't wait that long. Yo. Talk to talk to the people who aren't excited for Fallout 76. I'm going to have to wait until 2019 or 2020 to play the Elder Scrolls 6. I've never been a huge Hitman fan. I'm going to be honest. I, I think I played one of the games on console, like P PS2, and it was pretty cool, but I've never gotten, like, super into it. Ah, do not have a PS4, sir. 
in Miami that will show up. I may one day get Xbox. Miami is, uh, I think it's one of the biggest events. Because if I could... Well, no, PS4 you can stream too. We'll see. Because if Xbox brings back some of those old school Xbox exclusives, like Zone of the Enders, dog, I'm going to get in on it. The newest one's pretty cool. Okay. You live here? It looks real? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pharaoh. I feel cool. In terms of mechanics, I know that there's going to be a lot of the familiar... So it looks exactly like exactly what you see day and day. Some of the new stuff is, uh, a new Zone of the Enders would be sick? Heck yeah, it would! Uh, well, something that's going on with Xbox, I, I was talking about this yesterday with uh, Microsoft's whole announcement. They have, like, a service where you could... I, I don't know how much it costs. I don't know if it's, like, $10, $15, $20. But you can go ahead, sign up for that, and then you could you have access to a ton of games that they have online reserved to people who pay that subscription fee. And if they updated Zone of the Enders and they brought that into 4K and whatnot, you, you could take my 10 bucks, you could take my 10 bucks, my 20 bucks. That would give me months of fun. If I could sign up for three months for like 20 bucks, Zone of the Enders, let's go. But, all the Zone of the Enders games? Yeah. And then you throw in some other old sti old things too? It'd be amazing. Get to kill the people at SeaWorld? <laughs> Good for you, Vera. Oh, you think it's 10? What? It's only $10? That's amazing. That's not bad. For you to kind of challenge the game in many different ways. Yo, uh, for 10 bucks, you have access to all these games. And the thing about it is they added the Division and Fallout 4, and I forget the other game. But those aren't li like tiny games. Those are, you know, you're going to spend a long amount of time, a large amount of time on that. And I think Crackdown is going to be put on there as well. Crackdown 3. Pretty sure you can play the games on PC too. That might actually be the reason why I upgraded to Windows 10. I'm gonna have to hit my larches up. No, I'm not on Windows 10. Yes, I know I probably should be on Windows 10. Uh, I just tossed some people in this shark tank. With a shark RPG weights? Yeah, that's what's up. You can play buttloads on the X-Bone now? It's because they needed that. Excellent. They needed that for a very long time. We did it. We the did. PC gaming show is done. Thank you so much for joining us to host this year. Thank you. Wow, it's over. Thank you guys. Thanks for all of you who came out. Are we gonna get like one of those CD Projekt Red ending openers, or what's up with that? Know that everything you said was appropriate and intelligently. Oh, Stardark has a super interesting game that's coming out. That's who it was, Sam. A huge thank you to all our wonderful sponsors. Mm. She'll come back for a fourth straight year. They are High Res Studios, Digital Extremes, Archangel Hellfire, Team 17, Stardock Entertainment, Acer, Predator, Improbable, Oculus Rift, Drake's Cake, Tripwire, Frontier Developments, and Square Enix. We hope you have a wonderful Drake's Cakes. The the game. weirdest. Cheers. Thank you. The, the weirdest addition to this, but I can get behind it. That wasn't so the thing about it, that wasn't huge for PC, but there's some interesting things that are going on there. Bum, 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 bum. Loki Hitman never gets much footage in a game convention, but everybody who bought it at a Hitman game has never regretted spending money on it. That's good. Quality control, man. Quality control means a lot. As crazy as that sounds. Because people just know that your product is going to be good, like, up front. So anything you guys super excited for, and also thank you to the people watching this on YouTube, please be excellent to each other, have a nice day, and hit me up in the comments and tell me what you are looking forward to from what you've seen during the PC conference. Anyhow, peace, y'all. MK11? You're looking forward to that MK11? Okay. 
so MK is something that I was actually really happy about. I, I'm not like a huge Nether Realm person. Oh, MK11 ain't, not, ain't going down. You regretted Hitman? Abs 